bright lights of Broadway turn night into day, come with us as we go behind the scenes and mingle with the famous folks of a famous street. Here we are arriving at Jack Dempsey's restaurant to look in on the testimonial dinner to the King of Jazz, Paul Whiteman. The first speaker we hear is Rudy Valley. Paul Whiteman, I would like to present to you this testimonial on the sheepskin, signed with many names, as just a typical bit of our feeling for you as a man and an orchestra leader. Thank you, Rudy. I just want you to know how very deeply grateful I am, you and the other boys. Thank you so very Thank much, Paul. A few words from Jack Benny, radio star. Paul Whiteman was, has always been known as the king of jazz, and he still is. And of all the numbers that Whiteman has played in the past 20 years were laid end to end, it would still be Rhapsody in Blue. And now, Jack Dempsey. It gives me great pleasure to present to you this wonderful song. We wish you every good success, not only for 20 years more, but for 120 to come. Thank you very much. Our next stop is at the Winter Garden Theater, where Earl Carroll is selecting dancers for his new Broadway review. Let's go through the stage door and see what's going on. Hundreds of beautiful and talented girls have responded to the call and anxiously await their big chance, an audition before the celebrated producer. Mr. Carroll stands in the pit as the girls are lined up for his appraising eye. I'm very pleased that a call for the vanities could attract so many beautiful girls. Coats and purses in the foot. I want every young lady to take care of her bag and her coat. Keep them out of the foot there, they might catch fire. All right. All right, a quarter left turn and face that wall, girls, and look straight ahead. Thank you. Number one, step out. Number three, step out. Seven, step out. Nine, step out. And 13, that's lucky. All right, girls in the front line, give your names and addresses from that side, the rear line names and addresses from that side. And so, line after line of the hopefuls come before the judge. Put down one and uh, four and uh, nine in A group. Give your names and addresses on that side and the others, the rear line on the, your, your right. Those okayed for face and figure still have to pass the strenuous dance test. The competition is tough, but they carry on eagerly, hoping to be among the chosen few of Earl Carroll's dancing beauties. And now we move on to the Hollywood restaurant where the ever-popular Sophie Tucker is making a triumphant return to Broadway after a long and successful engagement abroad. Here we are in New York's famous nightclub, where a capacity crowd has gathered to give a warm welcome home to one of Broadway's favorite entertainers. The show opens with a song and dance parade of Broadway's loveliest Corrine. And now Miss Sophie Tucker. It's a grand welcome to a grand star. Thank you. Miss Tucker has just introduced Miss Beatrice Lilly, international star of radio and stage fame. It's a merry evening for the guests as they rub shoulders with the luminaries of the big street. And now meet that popular stage comedian, Miss Fanny Bryce. Broadway once more hears Sophie Tucker sing a song she made famous. You miss me, honey. Some of these days, you'll be so lonely. When you leave me, you know it's gonna grieve me. I wanna miss your big fat mama, your fat mama. Some of these days. When you leave me, you know it's gonna grieve me. Gonna miss your big fat mama, your mama. Now we move.
moved down 45th Street to the Music Box Theater to catch the glamorous opening night of Ceiling Zero. Let's drop backstage as Osgood Perkins, the star, arrives in his dressing room. Yeah? Just call the half hour, Miss Perkins. Don't worry, I'll make it. You'll probably have to hold the curtain for five minutes anyway. You always do on an opening night. The first nighters have begun to arrive, and in the lobby, Sam Harris, famous Broadway producer, wishes Brock Pemberton success on his new production. Good luck, Brock. Thanks, Sam. Same to you. I hope this place will be as big a hit as personal experience. I hope it's as big as dinner at eight, and I'll take half of it. Okay. Fine. The crowds are still pouring in, and among the early arrivals, we meet one of New York's well-known dramatic critics, Mr. Bernard Sobel. Hello, everybody. This is one of our opening nights, another exciting one. I wish you were here. We go backstage again to meet the leading lady, Margaret oh, Perry. Margaret. Now, what's on your mind? Don't you think we ought to go over the scene again, Art? Darling, we go up in ten minutes. If we don't know it now, we're never going to know it. How do you feel? Scared to death. Here's William Allen White, eminent journalist. I'm mighty glad to congratulate Brock Pemberton on another success. Near the head of the line, in the gray outfit, is Walter Winchell, famous Broadway columnist. And here's Gary Cooper. What's the matter, Gary? A little camera shy? And now a few words from the celebrated actor, Otis Skinner. Well, this is going to be a grand evening, boys and girls, because you've got a grand play and a grand producer and a marvelous company. We're all wishing everybody success. Curtain going up, Mr. Perkins. Now, let me out of here. Okay. 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 There's a hush of expectancy in the audience as the star prepares to make his entrance. And the play is on. And now for another thrill along New York's amusement lane. We arrive at the NBC building in Radio City just in time to catch an actual rehearsal of one of the popular Al Jolson Chateau broadcasts. It takes long hours of rehearsal to perfect the Jolson program, and here you get an idea of how this is accomplished. First, Victor Young puts his musicians through their paces. Eight bars, we'll bust into you. Come on. Take the last eight bars. Da, da, dum, bum, bum. Da, watch it, we're going to bust in. Bum, 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 bum. Da, 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 da. Together, together. And now let's leave Victor Young and move along to the control room where the production chief rehearses Jolson and Max Baer in a comedy sketch. <laughs> Baer plays Jolson's son in the sketch and here comes Papa. Oh, hello, Daddy. You back again? <laughs> Baer has broken up the proceedings with his wise crack. We've got a broadcast to do. What do you mean that uh, line, hello, daddy, you're back again? Well, you know you're my daddy. I'm only your daddy in the script. So many tools. And now Al so rehearses a song from his latest picture, Go Into Your Dance. So I can tweet it twelve. And hide it, hide it, how. I'd rather sing a simple thing. Let others sing. Let them sing. Sing about the moon. But as long as I can croon a little tune of Mammy, my Mammy, I'll think about you. The little flowers, the little flowers may bloom and the snow may fall, but just as long as I can sing it all, oh Mammy, my Mammy, I'll think about you. And now we bid you so long until we meet again on Broadway. Broadway.